Hi, welcome to 7 Facts. You are watching the 51st episode of the US series. I am covering all of the states and territories of the United States, so if you're interested in the subject, please feel free to watch the entire playlist. Similar videos await on my channel, so be sure to check it out and subscribe. Today, it's time to leave the states behind and start with the territories. And we'll start off with the American capital, Washington DC. So let's dig in and see what we can learn about it. But before we go any further, I would like to thank Diana Terje for helping me with this video. She has her own YouTube channel. I'll leave a link in the description. Go check it out and subscribe. The capital city of the United States is Washington DC. Everybody knows that. But this city is actually a separate entity, a federal district, the District of Columbia to be precise. That's what the DC stands for. This city, created in 1790, is not part of any state but a standalone region under the exclusive jurisdiction of Congress. Two states donated land to create Washington DC, Virginia and Maryland. This land originally included two already existing settlements, Georgetown and Alexandria. But Virginia later changed its mind and their donated land was given back along with Alexandria. So today's Washington only includes the land donated by Maryland. The capital of the United States was named in honor of not one but two historical figures, George Washington of course and Christopher Columbus. It was George Washington himself who chose the actual location of the future capital, and although it may not seem like it today, it was actually built on a mosquito-infected swamp that took years to drain. Without a doubt, Washington DC is an international city. I think it's pretty safe to say that everyone, or close to everyone, has heard about it. So you might expect it to be a large metropolis full of people. But in fact, Washington has less than 700,000 residents, making it only the 118th largest capital in the world. There's a catch though. Since it's the capital, it has a lot of jobs, so a lot of commuters. Which means that by day, the population passes well over 1 million. Plus, if we take into account its metropolitan area, the population explodes to about 6 million people. And there's no denying that Washington DC is an international city. 15% of its residents speak a different language than English, which might come in handy since the city hosts no less than 175 embassies. Only Brussels has more than that. Despite living in the capital, residents of Washington DC have some serious frustrations. For one, they couldn't vote for the President of the United States because they had no representatives in Congress since they aren't a state and thus have no votes in the Electoral College. It wasn't until 1961 that an amendment to the Constitution was adopted by which DC was allowed to three electoral votes. But the voting problems didn't end here. They still don't have a voting representative in Congress, only a non-voting delegate to the House of Representatives. However, residents are subject to all federal taxes, which are, by the way, among the highest in the entire Union. So whenever you see a protest saying, no taxation without representation, you'll know this is what they actually talk about. Furthermore, even though the city has a mayor and a council, their decisions can anytime be overruled by Congress, since they have complete authority over the city. Probably one of the most iconic monuments in Washington DC is the huge Washington Monument. This obelisk was built to commemorate George Washington and until 1889 it was the tallest man-made structure on the planet after which the Eiffel Tower in Paris took over the spot. Even so, to this day the monument is both the world's tallest stone structure and the world's tallest obelisk. Today it may look a bit sober, but the original design of the monument was rather different. 
it was supposed to have a circular building at the base, with Greek columns and a statue of the president on top, and the obelisk was supposed to spring out of the middle of the building. Basically, it was supposed to look like a Greek temple with a giant obelisk in the middle. However, due to the price tag, roughly the equivalent of $20 million today, only the obelisk was built. Even so, at one point in 1854, construction was halted due to a lack of funds. It wasn't until 1879 that Congress eventually funded the project, but when construction resumed, they used marbles from a different quarry than the original, which is why today the Washington Monument has two different shades. If you ever become the President of the United States, you get to live in a new home, reserved for the country's Commander-in-Chief. That's what the White House is actually for. Ironically, there was only one US President who didn't get to live in the White House, George Washington. He died shortly before it was finished, in 1799. This is one heck of a house. There are 132 rooms, 35 bathrooms, 6 different stories, 412 doors, 147 windows, 28 fireplaces, 8 staircases, and 3 elevators, a tennis court, a bowling alley, a movie theater, a jogging track, a swimming pool, oh, and 5 full-time chefs, and an underground bunker, you know, just in case. Now, if you're elected as president, you get to live in this house for the next four years, rent-free. But food and grocery expenses, toiletries and even dry cleaning are not free. Payment for these is taken out of the president's salary. The Library of Congress. You may have heard of it, but believe me, you don't know the half of it. It's officially a research library that serves the United States Congress, but it's also open to the public, making it the de facto National Library of the United States. It's actually housed in three different buildings in Washington, D.C., which may not be so surprising since it's the single largest library on the planet. Don't believe me? Here are some figures. Its collections include research materials from all parts of the world in more than 450 languages. It contains 38 million books and other printed materials, 3.6 million recordings, 14 million photographs, 5.5 million maps, 8.1 million pieces of sheet music, 70 million manuscripts, 5,711 incunables, which are books printed in Europe before 1501, and 122,810,430 special collections, which don't really belong in any category. This place is the closest thing we have to a repository of all the knowledge of humanity. There's one more institution I'd like to talk about, one that you probably heard of, the Smithsonian Institution. This place was established in 1846 for the increase and diffusion of knowledge. It was named after its founding donor, British scientist James Smithson, who never actually set foot in the United States. Nicknamed the nation's attic because of its large collections, the institution is practically a collection of museums and research centers administered by the government. Just like in the case of the Library of Congress, the statistics in this case are also very, very impressive. The 19 museums, 9 research centers and 1 zoo hold no less than 154 million items, from artworks to ancient artifacts and fossil specimens. Among the museums are the National Museum of Natural History, the National Museum of American History, or the National Air and Space Museum. There are over 200 similar institutions throughout the United States that are in fact Smithsonian affiliates. The collections include 9.9 .9 million digital recordings, 2 million library volumes, 4,500 cubic meters of archives, 
Allegedly, at any given time, only about 1% of their entire collection is on display. Which shouldn't bother you that much, since a lifetime wouldn't be enough to go through all of them. So there you have it. We've just went through 7 little known facts about Washington DC. If you liked it, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. Leave your comments downstairs if you have anything to say. Also, there's a Patreon page where you can support this channel even more. Click on the icon appearing on the screen or find the link in the description. I hope to see you next time. Bye.